Hi, this is Brian of Cairo, and I want to bring to light a new paper that came out this month in Pain Physician. And it has to do with the disc. Obviously, we work with disc a lot in our practice. And last year, we actually dissected a uh, pig vertebra to see what the actual nucleus looks like. As you can see from this video here, as we look at a young uh, pig vertebra, and obviously our, our young patients, is that disc is very uh, epoxy-like or, or very fluid. As we get older, as part of natural aging, is that is going to dry up, and that's okay. That is part of a natural process. Um, but when that happens, the disc becomes a little more sloppy. I talk to my patient, I say normally uh, your vertebra moves in a nice uh, triplanar range of motion, and that when that happens, you get some translation or sliding in there that can cause issues. But one thing that happens with our patients is they actually get degeneration of the annulus first. We get that from our flexion activities, our bending, our repetitive stresses. Well, if that happens first, our annulus dries up and degenerates faster, we get things like disc herniations. And this paper that we just saw in a pain physician said that 67% of these disc herniations resolve spontaneously. So conservative management is the best route. Conservative can mean a lot of different things. For you and I, that's more education, maybe manipulation, soft tissue mobilization, rehabilitation exercises, um, and for other people, it's more rest or massage. But when it comes to conservative management, we have to make sure we educate our patients on what's going on and what to expect. We saw from clinical rehabilitation last year with Chu uh, in 2015 is that the larger these disc problems are, the faster they resorb. Now, that doesn't mean a disc herniation went away in a day or a week or a month. In fact, we don't know how long it takes for those discs to resorb, but they do resorb by themselves, uh, which is great news for us and also our patients. Now, how can I demonstrate on a patient that they have a nerve tension sign, usually indicating more of a disc herniation, is I love the slump test. The slump test combines a ton of different tests into one simple maneuver to make my job easier to be able to document this person have uh, uh, dural tension signs. So with a slump test, what I'm gonna do is have the patient do a straight leg raise when they bring the uh, foot up into a straight leg position. Then they're gonna go into a well leg position and I'm looking for reproduction of symptoms. As soon as I can do both those and not have reproduction of the leg symptoms, I'll have them actually going through um, a double leg raise with a braggarts test. Now, if that still does not reproduce any nerve tension signs, I can have the person flex their head down and then slowly come towards me and then cough <coughs> and then relax. If that patient can go through all those maneuvers and not have reproduction of leg symptoms, I can be very confident they do not have any kind of dural tension. That's powerful for me and also for my patient. Is that now I can tell that person they do or do not have something impeding on that spinal cord and now I can uh, do the appropriate uh, conservative management. Here's why that's important, is the CARP has done this for you. We've already put these studies in their, your condition reference for your lumbar spine disc lesion. We've already put that information into your patient education. So not only are you getting the best possible information from the newest studies, your patients are getting the best possible information from these studies, and hopefully we can work together to get the right patient, the right care, at the right time. Thanks.